the, the shame and the defensiveness that creeps up when the shame comes in. And you can actually reach out and say, you know, I know that if, if we're not speaking right now, you have good reasons for not wanting to be close. Mm. And I am sorry that I let our relationship get to this point. I would really like to figure out what happened and how I can make repairs. And while I'm doing that, I would very much appreciate any clues that you can give me. But I assure you, I'm going to be thinking a lot about our relationship and how I can make repairs. I'm Summer. And I'm Mike. And we got married with children. It's been 12 years since we got this gang together. And we're still running the rapids of living with a blended family. And sometimes that is just not easy. If you're looking for support and tools when it comes to divorce, step parenting, co-parenting, and giving it your best, you're in the right place. We're talking about everything. You ready to get this party started? Always. Hello, and welcome back to another Everything Always episode. Today, Mike and I are talking about estrangement. What is estrangement? It's when you've been cut off by your own teen or adult child. If you've experienced this, you know how painful it can be and how shameful it can feel. And today's guest offers support, understanding, and most of all, the tools to repair the relationship along with the confidence to use them. She's the author of Reconnecting with Your Estranged Adult Child, which Mike and I have both read and highly recommend if this is something you or someone you know is struggling with. It offers rejected parents exactly what they need to navigate unwanted estrangement from an adult child. Her name is Tina Gilbertson, and she is a licensed professional counselor specializing in assisting and supporting parents of estranged children. She holds a master's degree in counseling psychology and has been practicing since 2007. She's also a board-certified telemental health provider. She hosts a week weekly podcast for estranged parents called the Reconnection Club podcast. And she's taken her experience with working with hundreds of estranged children and parents and combined that with current research to help parents see that they have more power than they realize to create positive changes with their children. So if you're asking, how did this happen? How long will it last? And is there any hope for repair and renewal? Today, you will find out that you are not alone with this painful problem, and it doesn't mean that you're a horrible person or even a bad parent. You'll also get to hear strategies, ideas, and practical steps for building a healthy, mutually satisfying relationship with your child. Tina, we are so, so excited to have you on the show today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much, you guys. It's great to be with you. I appreciate uh, you know the chance to to get to speak to you today. Oh, it's going to be fun. I hope you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It could be fun. It could be intense. This is this is a very it's a it's a hard topic, mm-hmm. and we know unfortunately we know a lot of people who are dealing with estrangement with their with their children, particularly grown children, teens, and and adult uh, adult as well. Mm-hmm. And it was so I'm just so amazed by all of the work that you have done. We've learned so much, and so to get to have you on the show to ask some more questions and questions that we get from our listeners is just so so valuable. Yeah, what a great opportunity. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, I hope that we can help some people today just by chatting about some of the issues. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Before we before we get into it, can you give a little bit of the background, the work that you do, and how you why it's so important to you? Sure. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know anything about estrangement between, uh, particularly between parents and, and adult children, until I became a therapist and. What I discovered was that more than one person among my therapy clients had cut off their parents. They, didn't, they were unhappy with them. They didn't want to go home for the holidays. They didn't want to return their calls. And so they would talk to me about what some of the issues were. And I would, when I asked, you know, well, what do your parents say when you talk to them about this? They would either say, I can't talk to them because they wouldn't understand, or they would say, I've tried and they just don't get it. And so I feel like I have no choice but to stay away. So I thought, gosh, this is, this is tragic. There's got to be a way for, for these parents to, to understand and be able to 
to work with the child to kind of work through some of these things. So I started, um, you know, writing some articles and stuff like that and just sort of putting out there some information that I thought parents could use. And lo and behold, I discovered hundreds of people out there. And then, in fact, there are actually thousands and tens of thousands, uh, as it turns out, who just came out of the woodwork saying, oh, my gosh, I really need this information. I have no idea what's going on with my child. So that's kind of how it started. I mean, it, I really started by talking to the people on the adult child side and then realized how big an issue this was. And that's, and that's what led into your book? Yeah, well, what I decided to do was to work with the parents because they did not know how much power they had. And I think I find this is generally true with the parent who is cut off by an adult child. They have no idea how powerful they are in the relationship. And so I wanted to work with them both because they have so much power and because they have actually so much shame and fear about reaching out for help. There's a lot of stigma attached to being someone who's rejected by your own child. It's just something that you want to hide. You think you're the only one. So I really, really wanted to work with the parents. And, um, and I started to do that. And after um, some years of doing that, I had enough material that I, you know, I was just writing everything down. And eventually I had enough for a book. So it's all in here <laughs> in this uh, reconnecting with your estranged adult child book. And, uh, and I, it, it, I really, it really is a great book. It's really informative. And for me, it helped change my perspective in terms of how I was thinking about a lot of things, right? Look from, you know, it allowed me to look at it from different angles that, that you're nor- normally your mind wouldn't, wouldn't consider. Yeah. So, yeah. It's an very, incredible very book nice work. and we'll definitely just for our listeners, we'll have a link to the book in our show notes and everything that is, that is Tina, because you have incredible resources for parents and it's so true that you know we've had we've had friends that we've spoken to who have children that are well into their 20s and they would you know occasionally you knew that they had children and then when you asked you know a more personal question it was kind of like awkward you know mm-hmm. well i actually haven't spoken to them or and then it, it's revealed a lot later because like you said there is there is so much shame and there is this stigma because the immediate feeling is you must be a bad parent if your child rejected you. Right. And so, yeah. yeah. I don't think that's uh, true though. I mean, I think the truth of it is all kinds of parents end up with troubled relationships with their kids. I've talked to some of the most conscientious people, people who really, really tried hard. And uh, I think there is Uh, There are certainly things that you can revisit and work on and repair, but there's also luck and there's temperament. And there are people who, who grow up with the most egregious abuse and they are loyal to their parents. They never estrange themselves. So it seems kind of random sometimes who ends up with estrangement and who doesn't. I don't think you can draw a line between terrible parenting and estrangement. Certainly lots of people are estranged from parents who were abusive, but there's a there's a wide continuum of of reasons for for this kind of cut off to happen. So yeah, it's it's not an indictment of you if your child wants to create distance. Right. What are some of the the reasons that you have seen, especially you know in in speaking to our audience who most are divorced parents. What are some of the reasons that you've seen that a, a child grows up, becomes a teen adult, and then kind of just rejects and estranged, you know, they just become estranged from that parent, from one of the parents? You know, one of the most kind of benign reasons that uh, people forget about is developmental needs, especially mm-hmm. when families have been really, really close. Parents can feel shocked and disturbed when the child suddenly at 19 or at whatever age, 26, 46, suddenly wants more room to not be in contact, to not be texting every day or even every week. Um, It's assumed that there's something terribly, terribly wrong here when really most of what's happening is the kid wants some space to, to become independent, to be an adult, to be who she is, to find out who she is when she's not so-and-so's daughter or a member of the such-and-such family. So 
keep in mind, especially with people at the age where they're thinking about leaving home or they just left home or even if they left home 10 years ago, but they've been really, really, really close for those 10 years, uh, there can come a time when they just need a little bit more space. And so it's important not to panic. And in those cases, just to give them space, you know, like, okay, we'll be here, you know, whenever, whenever you want to, uh, we're here if you need us. Right. And then you give them space and you trust that they will come back when they're ready. So that, it, that is often at play. And there may also be other issues. So it's a little bit complicated. Uh, divorce is often cited in estrangement. A lot of parents I talk to say, well, my, my child is angry at me over the divorce. But I think you guys will know that divorce per se, just the fact of getting divorced, is not necessarily going to uh, um, create damage in the relationship between a parent and a child. It is what happens, what is the child's experience of that? How, how much are they listened to? How much are their needs at least acknowledged, if not, um, if not uh, acted upon? You can't always do what your kids want, especially if your kids want you to stay together with their other parent, that kind of thing. But, you know, just kind of the way you go about it, uh, as far as taking their feelings into account, makes a big, big difference. So just having, having good communication. Right. Can, yeah, is very important. And you guys talk a lot about that. Another, another reason for estrangement sometimes is, is third party, third party interference where the kid doesn't like the new parent and wants the, the, the or sorry, the new uh, spouse and wants the parent to dump them. Or in the case of adult children, the parent doesn't like the new girlfriend or boyfriend mm. of, of their child. Right. And so suddenly there's a loyalty bind set up. And that's really unfortunate um, because if you want your kid to choose between you and the person they are marrying, you know, usually the parent is not going to come out on top in a contest like that. Right. And, you know, some, some other things that, that we've seen, and even just with relationships that are, are struggling and going towards that estrangement Mm -hmm. um, situation is, you know, we talk a lot about on our podcast to, to not, you know, slander or say anything about the other parent because oftentimes, yeah. And so, because the kids hear that and, and, you know, they're not, they're not necessarily in this mature state of mind, they're kids. So they hear, you know, they value, their parents are up on a pedestal. And so they value what their parents say and allow it to shape a lot of what they think. And, and Mm -hmm. we've done, uh, episodes as well on where it leads to parental alienation in, in yep. a lot of cases. What can, you know, a, a parent that has been alienated from their child, what can they do, especially when it's, you know, a teen or adult? Well, here's the good news about parental alienation. Um, it's a horrible thing when it happens. It should never, ever happen for uh, not only the reason that you mentioned, but also because the child, in some sense, is identified with the other parent. And when you put down that person, you're putting down an aspect of your child, and they don't feel good about themselves. Right. Uh, so it's, there's a lot of ways to hurt a child by alienating the other parent. The good news is that there's a lot more parental alienation behavior than successful alienation, Ooh. psychologically. So in other words, lots and lots of kids are subjected to this kind of attack uh, of one parent by another, but very few are brainwashed completely to say, boy, do I ever hate that other parent because this one told me that they're a horrible person. Yeah. Parental alienation is not uh, as successful as you might fear that it would be. It makes a child uncomfortable, it's painful, it's hurtful, but it doesn't necessarily turn them against the alienated parent. I mean, it's, it might be the less exposure they've had to that parent, the, the, the easier it might be to convince them that that person is the devil. But yeah, you know, yeah. once a child has his or her own relationship with you, it takes a little more, takes a little more to, to, to change their, their minds. They might go along, they might have to go along with the campaign of, 
of alienation in order to, to just live at home. But uh, in their hearts, if they already have a good relationship and they know who that other parent is, there's some protection there for the parent who's being targeted. Right. So what are things in, if, if there is, there is that distance. And I, I think a big question is, do I, do I just sit back and give, give the child space and not interfere because they clearly don't want a relationship or do I consistently reach out? And then there's even the question of, I, you know, I, I was providing financial support and now my child doesn't want to speak with me. Do I still do I still do that? So those are some of the big questions that we've we've heard when it yep. comes to estrangement. Yep. And the answer to what do I do completely depends on what the problem is. Mm. So if the problem is your child needs space and they haven't gotten it, then no, you don't want to be consistently reaching out because the problem is that they need space and they're not getting it. So continually reaching out toward them is continually ensuring that they don't have the space that they're they're needing. Right. But if there's a problem, if the child has been hurt, felt devalued, felt unsupported, felt rejected, felt neglected, then you do want to reach out and address that. And one of the best ways to kind of start a dialogue with someone who isn't talking to you is with an apology, because an apology is uh, easily digested. A, A good apology is something that doesn't get batted away as much as a hey, you need to hear my point of view. We need to talk. We need to fix this. I mean, it's easy for the, the child to say, well, I don't want to do that. I've already decided that you are who you are and you're not going to change and I don't like what I get from you, so why should I talk to you? But an apology that says essentially, you know, I realize that I have not always been there for you in the way that I, that I want, that I wish I had. And there are some things I, I need to apologize to you for. I mean, that's a very different gambit than yes. we need to fix this. As far that's as so when- powerful right there, that is so powerful to, to do that because you've, you've put down walls and it's, it's now no longer a, I have to be defensive or you have to be defensive by doing that. I'm always that's a big right. fan of, <laughs> of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, a, that's exactly why you, you lead with an apology because you're, you're right. It, it takes the defenses right down. There's nothing to defend against. Um, but you also asked about financial support. And presumably, if your child is like college age or something like that and has no other source of income, you're, you're not supporting your child um, as a quid pro quo. I'll do this for you if you do that for me. You're supporting your child because you want to support your child. As a parent, you are wired to want your child to thrive and succeed and be happy. So, uh, let's not imagine that you are supporting them the way you would be supporting supporting a neighbor, or mm. or or a coworker, or you know a, a child in Africa. Even you know, I mean, this is your child. You are invested. You know, this is your family. So it's not like you're you're just doing your child a favor by sending the money. You are sleeping better at night if your child has a home. You are, you have greater peace of mind if your child, you know, is going to graduate. Um, so it's a little different from just a, a quid pro quo where I'm going to pay your college, but you have to, you have to call me every week and you have to kind of be there for me if I reach out to you. Right. What is that? What is that kind of line in terms of, you know, you're a parent and you you want to teach responsibility you want to teach manners those types of things or just mm-hmm. kind of you know i'm not i'm not going to be taken advantage of all the kinds of things that you would do in a normal healthy relationship where you're not estranged how yeah. does that change in the role of the parent when when the child is like don't talk to me i don't want to talk to you yeah well hopefully you have done all of that while the child was growing up you've taught manners you've taught healthy boundaries, you've done all of that great parenting work while the child was forming, you know, the person he was going to be. So if, if you want to start at 21 teaching a parent, teaching a child how to behave, it's a, it's a little bit late. You're a little bit late to the game. The ship has sailed. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you know, you also do, you do want to set 
boundaries. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you don't want to be the parent who complains, I sent my kid this many thousands of dollars and I get nothing back. Well, I mean, it, at a certain point, you must decide if you don't want to feel uh, um, taken advantage of or abused, what are your limits? You know, you get to decide that. Because after a child is an adult, there is no requirement, there's certainly no legal obligation for you to give them the shirt off your back. Right. No, that's, so, a, that's a good point. Yeah. And it is, it is definitely, and, and I'm sure every situation is is very different, but you don't, I would, you know, I, you'd worry about the, oh, I hear, I hear from my child every time they need money. And that's the only time I hear from them because I've I've seen that happen as well. And it's like, wait a minute now, I was so excited to hear from you thought we turned a corner, but really you're just asking for, for money. (laughs) Yeah. Well, your child has learned that you are a resource they can reach out to. So, um, in a way, good for you for letting them know that you are a resource for them. But at a certain point, I mean, you've given them money every time they they reach out. Of course, they're going to ask when they have a need because they've learned that 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 works, that that is something that they're allowed to do. So, I mean, it's not like they're being evil uh, by by contacting you just to ask for money. If that if you know if that hurts, if that doesn't fit for you, then you get to set a boundary. Some right. of the things that p- parents will do with adult children is they may decide, well, what am I comfortable with? Well, I will give my child X amount of dollars every X period of time. And you know what? I don't even care what they spend it on. They're an adult. If, if they come to me for any reason, they don't have to tell me what it is. I will give this much money in this period of time. And that's, that's it. Then, then the bank is closed. Yeah. And that way you you are giving it a level that's comfortable and affordable that's not going to put you in the poor house, you know, f- for your retirement. Or it might be nothing. You don't have to give to an adult child, but I think it is um, not very relationship enhancing if you suddenly pull the rug out when you have been the gravy train all this time and just suddenly arbitrarily, no, nope, we're not doing that anymore without warning. Um, so it's kind of a balancing act. You do get to set boundaries, but if you decide, hey, I don't like how I feel, then you don't want to do some, pull something sudden that leaves the child in the lurch. You want to say, you know what, I, uh, we've been happy to help you all this time. Um, our needs are changing. Here's what we can do now. <clears throat> right. I've got a different kind of a question, um, mm-hmm. but I think it's it's still... <sighs> It's, I, I, I'm, I'm very curious about this. So there, there's situations where a parent just walks away, you know, after so many years of being in a child's life. And um, there's in that kind of situation. So it's estrangement, not necessarily by the child's choice. Maybe it was an argument. Something happens and the parent walks away. And the question is, what does the other parent that now, you know, has now taken over full, you know, okay, we were, we were divorced, we were sharing custody, now we're not anymore. And it's just me. What does, how does that parent help in that type of an an estrangement? Because it is estrangement. It's just a different kind. What you wouldn't normally expect. (laughs) What you wouldn't normally expect. Yeah. Yeah. Except it does. It does happen. Is that something that's. Well, I, 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 think it that it's less prevalent than children cutting off their parents. I hope that it's less prevalent than children cutting off their parents because to me that's the most heartbreaking thing is to be rejected by uh, your own parent um, because you know that is the person whose decisions made you part of their family. So I mean it's never a, a peer-to-peer relationship. And as painful as it is to be rejected by your child, when your own parents walk away from you, there's, that's a different kind of a pain and what can you do about it? So if you're the parent who's left in the picture, um, you can, uh, you know, you were bringing up before that you don't want to bad mouth the other parent. And I think that's still true, but you can uh, validate your child's feelings about the loss of that parent. And unfortunately, like so many things that happen that are going to happen to your children in their lives, that there are some things that a parent can't fix and your heart just breaks as you watch your child uh, experience 
that, but you can be the, the parent that they can come to and you can be that soft place to fall. That's really the best you can do is to be there for your child in a, just 100% with with boundaries of course that's always the caveat with boundaries hey guys guess what we have a new website where you can see all of our podcasts and get easy access to the show notes everything we talk about on the episodes and you can even listen to the podcast directly from the site you can contact us through the site and share your thoughts and questions check it out at www.everythingalways.co That's www.everythingalways.co. And you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Everything Always Co. We just set it up and we'll be sure to put important announcements there. And we love that this podcast has been so helpful to so many and our hope is to share it with even more. So can you help us? Will you take a moment now or after the episode to subscribe to the podcast, write a review and share it? It would mean the world to us and it helps us to keep bringing you the best content. Come on, we appreciate you guys. So what do you say, baby? Back to the episode? Back to the episode. We, there's, you know, something common that we see is the the step parent. So in the case of estrangement where there's a couple and the the stepchild has estranged themselves from or distanced themselves from their their bio mother or father, mm-hmm. it's a helpless feeling for the step parent. But at the same time, like you said, there's boundaries, there's what what can I do? What shouldn't I do? Is there something I should do? Because they once had that relationship with with the stepchild. What is there anything that they can do or should they just kind of sit back and and just be supportive? Well, I think they can take their cue from their spouse and, you know, get a sense of, of how is their spouse taking this? If the spouse is like, ah, good riddance, uh, you know, which it's conceivable that could be, then, then there's nothing perhaps that the step parent needs to do. But if they sense that their spouse is suffering, They can encourage the spouse, first of all, let them know, of course you're suffering, this is a a very painful thing, and it doesn't mean that you are a failure as a parent, and if you want to, there are things that you can do, and you can, you can make relationship repairs without your child's participation. You, as the parent, this is you talking to your, your spouse, who is the parent of the child, yeah. Uh, who's walked away. You as a parent have lots of things you can do if you're up for it. And I, I want to support you in that. And um, yeah, just let them know that they're, they do have options if they want to exercise them. Because yes. there are a lot of options for parents who are, who are rejected by their children. Which leads us into our next mm-hmm. question. What are some of those options? Because I'm, I'm guessing, you know, people in this situation are listening going, oh, that's me. Or they hear something else and say, oh, that's me. And then, you know, the burning question is, what can I do to repair this? Yeah, or strategies or, or, or things to, to make things better, to, to get back into having that relationship and, and the estrangement. Yeah. Well, I mean, the first thing uh, to do is just take a breath and, um, and try not to panic if, you're, if your child has, has gone away. You do have some time to, to figure out how to make repairs. You cannot solve a problem you don't understand. Right. But you don't want to throw up your hands and say, well, I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. There's always clues because estrangement has, has roots in history. It's never spontaneous. No one ever just says, you know what? I loved you yesterday and we, everything was good, but today you didn't give me what I want. And so I don't like you anymore and I'm walking <laughs> away. That, that is not how we operate. And right. um, whether the parent knows it or not, um, or, or saw it at the time, estrangement usually is something that has been brewing. So you can, uh, the, you don't want to reach out to your child as, as a day one kind of thing. The, the day one activity is to figure out how did we get here? Mm. And a lot of parents will say, I have no idea. I really don't have any idea. I don't know what's going on. Then you, you need to take some time and search for those clues because they, they are there. Did your child have a really difficult adolescence? Was there a, a really volatile relationship? That's a, that's a, um, 
an indicator of, not an indicator, but it's a, a risk factor for, for estrangement in adulthood. You can look back and say, yeah, uh, his adolescence was really stormy. And I just kind of threw up my hands at the time. I didn't know what to do with him. So I, I just kind of stuck my fingers in my ears and hoped it would end soon. <laughs> yeah. But, but there's a bunch of stuff in there that might need to be addressed. You know, you might need to go back and say, you know, that, that didn't go so well. When, when he was 15 or 16 or whatever. And what do I need to go back and address? In other words, you, you just you want to spend some time figuring out where, when the distance started and what are the themes of your child's complaints. Because if you, if you look, even a really well-behaved child, you can find some, some displeasure, some... some Sometimes they go quiet. There are things that just kind of are clues that make you say, you know, she was not having that good an experience during yeah. that time. And what was happening between us? What were our conversations like? What did she need that I wasn't able to give at that time? And you can forgive yourself for not being able to, to give, you know, perfect nurturing or whatever it was that your child needed because everybody's human. And we have a lot of stuff going on. Right. But it's important to figure out what, what were the needs that were not met. And then, I mean, like you said earlier, it's that, it's that apology and yeah. that acknowledgement of, you know, I can imagine that it must have been hard going through and whatever yep. those, those things that you've identified. Yep. And if you can't identify anything, then what you can do, all you've got to do is get past the, the shame and the defensiveness that creeps up when the shame comes in. And you can actually reach out and say, you know, I know that if, if we're not speaking right now, you have good reasons for not wanting to be close. Hmm. And I am sorry that I let our relationship get to this point. I would really like to figure out what happened and how I can make repairs. And while I'm doing that, I would very much appreciate any clues that you can give me. But I assure you, I'm going to be thinking a lot about our relationship and how I can make repairs, you know? So even if you have zero information, you can let your child know that you are aware there is a problem and that you are open to it, addressing it without, uh, without debate. Right. What kind of, you know, uh, uh, what's the, the word I'm looking for, reunions or reunifications with, with parent and child? Have you, some, have you witnessed? Some success stories. Yes, some oh, success yeah. stories. Let's Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we do, uh, we have this reconnection club. It's kind of like a, an online school for parents. And the textbook is, is the book that we mentioned earlier. Uh, and we regularly hear from people whose adult children are back in their lives. And it is always, 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 pretty much. Okay, okay, let me just say this. Occasionally, an adult child will just come back. And the parent didn't do anything. The child oh. just decides to come back. Now, how long that reconciliation is going to last is another question. Because if the issues haven't been addressed, it may only be a matter of time before you've got an off again. Yeah, phase of your on again reconciliation, but the but the really successful reconciliations where both the parent and the child really seem to feel uh, like they've experienced some healing come after a considerable amount of personal healing from the parent. So often uh, with estrangement, it is a crucible for personal growth in the parent. There are things that that have been true for them in their family of origin or in their lives that that hurt them you know they have injuries emotional wounds that actually seeped into their relationship with their child in ways that they did not recognize parent child relationship is such a, an intimate one in some ways uh, it's certainly a unique relationship there aren't too many relationships where you you hold some you hold somebody in your arms, who's, who's little tiny, and then you completely, they're totally dependent on you and completely helpless. I mean, you don't have bosses like that. You don't have friends like that. Um, mm -hmm. This is a unique relationship. And so 
the issues, I keep using that word, but the, 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 the injuries that the parent has sustained, they, they can come out in, in weird ways in the parent-child relationship in a way that no parent wants, but um, it seems to happen quite often. Um, it's like, you know, the next generation everything in families is pretty much not everything but you know from one generation to the next there are all kinds of dynamics and uh, ways of doing relationships that are passed on and these are kind of invisible it's like we we swim in our family like fish swim in water and we don't see it right so That's those are the kinds of things that have that parents are carrying and un Maybe, maybe unwittingly carrying on that some, sometimes you hit a generation and the kid's like, oh, I don't like that. I'm not doing that. Yeah. It's amazing to when these children become adults and they have that separation from both parents, not, not even necessarily estrangement, but even just doing life on their own, how you start to see things differently, because like you said, you're swimming and you don't, you can't see it clearly. And then it will be, I mean, I've, I've had moments like that, you know, where it's, it's years later and you go, huh, that's interesting. And then you're back in, you know, a family, you're too close to it. And you maybe maybe haven't seen your parents or somebody in so long, and then you're in it and you're like, oh my gosh, that was so normal to me, but that's a little bit weird to me now, (laughs) you know, it's, it's things like that. And, you know, you wonder, I, I think a big thing in in these type situations too, and it's probably the hardest thing, is the patience and the time that it takes for these things to evolve. Like you said, it just doesn't, you don't just fix a problem overnight. <clears throat> I guess there's some things that can get, but you know, it's especially when it comes to emotions and things like this, it really takes time. But I think that's that's also the thing that's the painful part is because you feel so eager to repair things. That's right. Yeah, that's kind of the paradox of relationship repair is like the bigger a hurry you're in, the the harder it is to actually make an effective repair. Yeah. Like you have to go in the opposite direction than you're trying to go in order to actually make headway. Right. And you have to have two active participants. So it's like you can't fix anything if you if you're if you don't have both people that are wanting to move in that direction. So sometimes time is the only thing that you have. Right, but I think there's something unique about the parent-child relationship where I personally believe that most of us, if we could do so without getting hurt, would prefer to have a relationship with our parents. We yes. would like to be able to cherish our parents and feel cherished by them. So I always kind of start with the assumption that the adult child, if, if he or she is not making a move, toward the parent, it's not because they don't want a good relationship with the parent, it's because they've given up hope. And so if uh, hopefully they are doing their own personal work, they're in therapy, they're, they're um, growing to a, in compassion and maybe able to see the parent more as a, as a human being. But regardless of whether the adult child is doing that work, it, it benefits both the parent and the child if the parent is doing that work. Because the parent can really uh, lead the way and, and be a role model and set the tone in a way that I don't think the child ever can. I mean, it's very sad to me. I hear from adult children all the time, actually, who want to know if they can do therapy with their parents because they have a problem with the parents. But, you know, I don't think the child can set the tone for the relationship if the parent is not on board with making changes so that they can be mutually satisfied in their relationship. Yeah. So I think unlike almost any other relationship, I think that if the child, if the adult child is not doing their work, parents can still make headway. You know, you can just think of giving 100% to that relationship and, and leaving the rest up to, to, to fate rather than looking for 50-50. Right. Yeah, that was something that really um, stood out to me in, in, your, in your book was that I think a lot of people, a lot of parents are going into this saying, my child doesn't want a relationship with me. And that's what we think. But really, that's not that's not really what it is. Because deep down, 
they do want that, but they're not getting the things that they need. And so it's easier for them to just walk away than to feel disappointed or upset. Bingo. I think that's, that's it exactly. And when your child loses hope that you can, you know, be someone who it's a pleasure for them to relate to, it's, it's not over, you know, um, it's hard to turn the bus around or the train or whatever, but it's not impossible. We, we think we know who our parents are and what they're capable of. We think that about all our, all our family members, right? Oh, she would never read that book or he, he could never change. Yeah. But in fact, they don't, we don't know our family members as right. well as we think we do. And I would never say that somebody is incapable of change. Absolutely. So you can prove your kid wrong. You know, you can be, and this isn't about changing who you are. That's the thing. You don't have to change who you are, but you might want to be more of yourself with your kid, more parts of yourself that your kid has never seen. Yeah. That could be exciting for both of you. Mm-hmm. And you might, you know, it, you, you may, you may change, you may not change, but you would, I, I would imagine this type of thing would certainly help you grow in better ways. Yeah, I mean, um, you you will probably change the way you relate to your child. Yeah, um, if if that's not working or if it hasn't worked in the past, but that doesn't mean you have to change the person you are. Um, you know, there are generational, there are different expectations in younger generations from from ones that came before. There was a time when no one had ever heard the term self esteem or childhood emotional neglect or Emotional abuse. These are all kinds of newer concepts that young people are, are much more familiar with. So true. Yeah. So it may just be a matter of educating yourself. Oh, wow, that's important to my child. Well, you know, I can still be myself and also be educated about this concept. And oh, yeah, my child likes it when I say, you know, that's great, honey. You know, I. I'm sure you, it, it, you might have to learn a different way of talking to your child, and it might feel artificial. Um, it might feel inauthentic, but everything feels artificial and inauthentic when you first start doing it, even really good stuff. Right. You know, healthy stuff. Absolutely. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, there's just like, so it's a big topic. It's a big topic in so many different and so many different scenarios of how things could lead to this, how, Mm -hmm. you know, how, how they could evolve, how Mm -hmm. to get out of it. I mean, it's really, it's, it seems to me, it's like one of those things where, you know, counseling or having some assistance would be really beneficial for people that are struggling with this Mm -hmm. to figure out what the right steps are. When do you give space? When do you not give space? When, you know, there's, it's, it's complicated. Yeah. And we cover it. Oh, sorry. It is. But, you know, I was going to say the more you as a parent become um, emotionally literate and compassionate with yourself, the easier it is to make those decisions about how to, how to relate to your kid. Right. Yeah, that's so true. I think we covered so many things, but again, there's always, you know, unique situations. I'd I'd love to send if you, you know, your your website, if you can let us know your website. I'm also going to put a link to all of this in in the show notes, the book and everything that you you do because it's amazing your community. Um, but if you could uh, let us know your website for those that are listening right now, I want to type it in immediately. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so the, uh, the website that goes along with the book is reconnectionclub.com. That's the kind of online school for parents who are working their way back to their estranged adult children. And if people just want to learn about me and my publications, I've got a couple of books and uh, some services, they can just go to tinagilbertson.com. Perfect. We'll have all of that in the show notes again. Thank you so, so much. I can't even tell you how grateful we are that you, that you came on and really, we learned so much. We learned so much from the book and from speaking with you. And I know this is going to be incredibly valuable for our listeners. Well, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. And we like to say, if you enjoyed this episode, share it with someone you love and be bold enough to share it with someone you don't. See you next time.